How do you take apart a four-way ceiling cassette? How do you get to the condensate pump? If you've got an issue with your drain, maybe there's an error code that says that there's an issue with the pump or the float, which is the float switch that will rise and activate the condensate pump to pump out the water in cassettes, then you may have to actually take the pan down to clean the pan and then to clean the pump. Today I'm going to show you how to take apart this type of mini split indoor unit to be able to get to that pump. This is made by Samsung and it has a pump inside that is sitting above the indoor pan and it has a 29 inch lift. So it will lift the water and pump it up 29 inches. So you can see our drain comes out and then up. You're watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. Let's get started. So we have to take the fascia panel off of the body of the cassette first. How do we do that? We want to take and push these tabs and say pull to let the filter down. Once the filter's down, then we're going to be able to take, which you can do this before, we're going to take the four corner pieces off, which are plastic, to get to the four screws. This fascia panel goes on after you've installed the cassette. So we've got our four plastic pieces on the corners, and these are hiding those screws. So now we've got our screws ex exposed. We got four of them. There's one, and they look like this. So we got one, two, three, and four. And once you get those four screws loosened up, taken out, then you could potentially take this facial panel off. However, there are some wires that connect from the control board to the actual display and receiver. Every mini split indoor unit has a receiver and that receiver works with the transmitter, which is the wireless remote controller, to receive commands. So now what we're gonna do before we take this fascia panel off is we're gonna take the cover off of the control board. There's two screws, they're Phillips screws. We just took those screws loose. Take a look right here take and pop this cover off. So now that we got the cover off, we can see our control board. Take a look. There's your control board. Over here we got L1 and L2, and then over here we've got our communication cables. Now we've got to take our wires from our fascia panel and disconnect them from the board. So you see these three wires right here? Those go into our fascia panel. So make sure there's no power. Check L1 and L2 to make sure there's no power before you ever try to take apart this cassette. Now we're gonna take these plugs and disconnect them one by one. There's a white Molex plug, a blue Molex plug, and another white Molex plug. Now, you can see, I love these hooks that hold the fascia panel. There's one right here, and there's one right here. Take with your hand and take that hook. That way you can take that fascia panel off, look. Now we got our fascia panel disconnected. And you can see there were three wires that were connected to the fascia panel. So we can't just take that fascia panel off without disconnecting those wires. This fascia panel is what will hide the four areas around that cassette. It will hide that. It will hide this whole entire, these openings, which are the supply air openings. So this is the return. These are the supply air openings or supply ducts. Now this is our pan. See this pan? Now what do we do next? Well, we got to take our power and communication cables loose. Make sure you pay attention to the communication wires and how everything was hooked up. All right. 
we got our L1, our L2, and then we got our ground. Now, once we get those wires loosened up, then we can pull that cable out. But I'm gonna go ahead and take these out first. And now, that's disconnected, that's disconnected. We can pull these wires out. All right, now our wiring is disconnected. What does this allow us to do? It allows us to pull the pan down. But we're not gonna pull the pan down yet because I want to get this control board out of the way. So I got one screw on this side. I got one screw on this side that holds that control board in place. You see now, it's hanging down, right? But we cannot take that control board down yet because there's some wires that connect to it, like the evaporator coil sensors, those heat exchanger sensors. We've got the indoor BLDC uh, three-phase fan motor wires, that plug. And then we've also got the plug for the condensate uh, pump. So we're gonna take those loose. So where are those at? Well, we got this plug, which is our two sensors. Then we've got this plug right here, which is a white Molex plug, and that's for our fan motor. All right, we got those two loosened up. We got two more plugs, I'm pretty sure. All right, one is for the condensate pump, and one is for the float switch. Oh, now we can take bend this plastic hook out of the way and there's our control board and these are the wires that go to uh, sensors motors and uh, you know the float switch so now we can take the pan down but we couldn't take the pan down until we could route these wires through that hole before you take the pan down there's something super important you need to know I would get a bucket or a shop vac and I would take and pull this plug out. Why would I do that? Because this pan may hold water. And if you pull this plug out right here, you can drain that water. I'll show you. See? Pull the plug out, drain the water, and then drop the pan. Okay? Make sure you drain the pan. If you're in a customer's home and you don't drain that pan and then you try to take the pan down, you're gonna have water all over the floor. Now we can take the condensate pan down so we can clean it. We have four screws. We have one here. Also, if you've got a big cassette, you may need to have some help. This is a mini four-way cassette. So the dimensions are 24 by 24 or two foot by two foot. This will actually fit in a drop ceiling. But you've got bigger cassettes. They're 33 inches by 33 inches and even bigger, four tons. They're 37 inches. And that's huge. So you're talking about three foot by three foot. I would have somebody on one side of it holding it. Uh, if not, you're gonna have to do this. So let's take these last two screws out. All right. One, two. All right. Those screws are out. Now this pan will drop. And you can see how may have some trouble feeding. This is one, one reason you may need help, is feeding these wires through. So now we've got the pan dropped. And if you take a look at this pan, you see this pan, well, this is in a training lab, so it's not in someone's home, but I've had it to where we've got all kinds of crud and gunk and black looking mold. And this right here is where that plug was. So you can see it's in a lower point at the of the pan and all this water would basically be right here. Now, if we look again, you see where that plug was? What's right above that plug? The condensate pump. There's our pump, there's the float switch. See that? So when the float switch rises, it kicks the pump on. 
and the pump's got a check valve in line. This is the blower wheel and this is the coil. If you don't know how to clean a four-way ceiling cassette, I've got a video and I'll put the link to that video right here so you can learn more about cleaning a four-way cassette, what supplies, materials, and tools I use. All right, so we drop the pan. Now, how do we take the pump out? What's next? So this is where you would want to have some type of cutting tool. And this is where we would take and normally cut these wires right here. Why would, I'm not cut the wires, cut the zip tie. Why would we want to cut this zip tie? Because this holds the wire that goes to the pump and to the flow, to, or flow switch. Now we take our Phillips screwdriver, which you need a Phillips screwdriver. I should explain that before. You got a Phillips screwdriver and you can take all the screws out. There's one screw and here is another screw. And now we can't get the pump out until we take off the outlet tube for that pump. So we're going to take and pull that out. And this is it. This is it. This is the condensate pump. And it sits like this inside that pan. Take a look. This was the float switch. And this is the wire that goes to that float switch. It's a two wire. And then we've got another wire that goes to our pump. And this pump is 12 volt. So it only takes 12 volts DC to power this pump. And you may have to take this pump apart. Super simple. You just take a flathead screwdriver and you pop these pieces right here. Boop. And I could probably do it right now with my, uh, my cutting tool. Watch. See? One more. There it is. There's the impeller. You may have to clean that out. Now, whenever I perform maintenance on a four-way ceiling cassette, I, do, I not only clean the coil, sometimes I clean the pan, the coil, I take this little pump apart, and then right here, there's a tube, okay? And that tube, I take that tube and I put my shot back on it, and I shot back that tube out. This is how you take apart a four-way ceiling cassette. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. If you learned something in today's video, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, questions can lead to new content. But if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience in the field as a technician to help you be a better technician. And if you want to take your training to the next level, go check out my members only content, my training courses for HVAC. If you become a level three member, you can get all access to those videos. There's about 20 and they're how to make your business better by getting more customers, how to price duct work, how to size duct work, how to install duct work, geothermal training, sales training, all that information is there to be able to help you. If you join as a level one member, then you'll get my email. Email me and I'll give you a bunch of guides to help you get started in the field as a technician. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. This is Taddy Digest. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.